Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Higher Aim with Dr. Kurt Dodd. If you'd like to stay connected with us outside of today's digital broadcast, be sure and download our free mobile app for your smartphone. Through the app, you can watch more of Dr. Dodd's sermons, read daily devotions, access our Bible reading plan, and so much more. To download this free app, just open the App Store on your smartphone and search for Higher Aim with Dr. Kurt Dodd. We hope this app is an encouragement to you and that using it will help you grow in your relationship with Christ. Thank you again for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy this episode of Higher Aim. I'm so glad that you are with us today because I am excited about sharing with you this message that God has placed on my heart. Uh, You know, we have been traveling in John's gospel for quite some time, and now we are nearing the end as we look at Jesus, who is the Ha Logos, the Word, and how he is revealing to us by his lifestyle and his words what God wants us to know about him and about what he wants us to do. But before we get into our our, our study this morning, I've got to tell you a story. And I I really want to be transparent with you. I've always tried to be transparent with you uh, to let you know part of my journey. Um, Years ago, when I pastored in Houston, uh, I took our staff on a staff retreat. And we were going to talk about the... uh, next year, where we were going to go, what we were going to do, uh, how we would calendar, what we would emphasize. And we had a, a, a pretty good plan already in place. But that morning that I woke up in my hotel room by myself, I just began to pray, oh God, where do you want me to lead our church this year? You have already given us a plan as a staff, but I want to know what you want. And in that moment before I could even say, in Jesus' name, amen, It was like the Lord spoke to my heart, and I heard him uh, share with me his word. And of all the places he would take me, it would be to Ephesians chapter 5, where the Scripture says, Husbands, love your wives like Christ loves the church. Oh, man. I mean, I asked God to speak, and he spoke. And it was as if the Spirit of God continued with me and said, how about it, Kurt? Do you love your wife like Christ loves the church? I I didn't want to go there. I, I, I didn't want to go there. And so I ended the prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever asked God for something and then he gave it to you, but you didn't like the answer? (laughs) It was one of those times. And so immediately I got up and got in the shower and to get ready to, to go. And in the middle of that shower, the Spirit of God began to probe my heart. And he just said, Kurt, do you love your wife like Christ loves the church. <laughs> and I remember it like it was yesterday. I, I, I broke into tears, and I began to cry and, and weep, and, and I said, oh, God, I, I don't know how to do that. You know, Lord, I come from a broken home. I don't have a motto of a father loving my mother that I saw on a consistent basis. I had it for a couple of years, but I never really saw it. So I don't know how. And then the Spirit of God just spoke to me and said, you are to love your wife 
not like you saw your parents exhibit love, not like your father loved your mother, or some one that uh, was a, a hero loving their spouse, but you are to love your wife just like Christ, who is our ultimate motto, does the church. And I just bowed my head and said, God, I don't know how, but I'm willing to learn. I couldn't wait to get out of that shower. And the moment I did, I sat on the side of my bed in that hotel, and I just prayed a simple prayer. Oh, God, would you show me how? And I knew where he wanted me to go. I began to go through all of the Gospels, and I began to, to read them in a different light. I, I read them with uh, the, the focus on gleaning everything that Jesus did in loving his disciples, how he loved them. I couldn't write fast enough. I mean, as I walked through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and I focused on the red letters and what Jesus had not only said, but also those things that I felt drawn to about what he did, and it came alive. I couldn't wait to share with our staff. And so when I finally went to our staff uh, retreat. We were all sitting around a, a, a giant uh, uh, table. Uh, uh, all of the divisions were represented. And I started our, our prayer time together and said, let me just tell you what God has done, what he has spoken to me in my heart, and where I feel like God wants to take our church over this next year. And I said, I want to know what God is saying to you about this issue, especially men, uh, the men who served on our staff, and there were women too. I said, what is God saying to you? Do you struggle in that area like me? And it was amazing every one of our, our staff members began to speak, and they uh, literally were uh, just being transparent. And the man who, who was leading our pastoral care ministry, who had been married longer than all of us, probably double uh, being married to his, his wife uh, than, than our staff, broke down in tears, and he began to say, I struggle with that so badly. The truth is, my wife tells me I, I speak critical words to her, and I don't mean to, but sometimes they, they, they come out, and I want to be a better man. I want to be a better husband, but I struggle too. And there was a sense in that moment of, of confirmation about where we were to go. And so for the next 27 weeks, that's where we camped as a church. And we went through all of the things, all of the words, all of the lifestyle of Jesus that revealed how we are to love our spouses, like Christ loved the church. And that's where we're going today. As we begin our, our final journey through the Gospel of John, you know what we're going to find? We are going to find the lifestyle that teaches us how to love. So here is the principle that God is speaking to uh, all of us today that we will unpack together, and it's this. God wants every one of us to learn to love. Got that? You may be thinking, boy, I got that down. And if you're married, you may want to ask your spouse if, if there's any room for improvement. If you're a student, 
Uh, I dare you to ask uh, one of your friends, do you love them? And how do they know that you love them? Uh, maybe if you really want the truth, ask your brother or your sister that you live in the same household with, do they feel like you love them? Oh, today, here we go. So hang on. God bless you. Today, we are going to learn to love. Well, here we are in John's Gospel, and though we are going to take it all the way through the end of the book, if we are going to learn to love, we need to go a step back and go to chapter 13, verse 1. L allow me to read this to you. Remember, they're in the upper room, and the Scripture tells us of uh, that Jesus knew how to love. Here's what the Bible says in John 13, 1. Why don't you follow along? It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Here it is. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Now, this passage uh, reveals to us that Jesus, he is our model. He is our model of, of how to love. I mean, really love other people. And as he loved his disciples, we are to learn to love each other just like this. Now, I, I want to share with you this because uh, Jesus being our model, our example, follows uh, chapter 1, verse 18, which launched this series, which declares there in John 1, 18, these words, no one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. Now, if you've been watching and listening uh, to this series, you know that that phrase has made him known is a Greek phrase that describes to draw out as in a narrative, to tell the story. So what Jesus is doing for us is to show us who the Father is, to show us what he wants of our lives. You got that? So that's important for you and, and me to remember. So hear this. This is not a sermon about marriage, though it is about being married and how to act like it while you're married. It is not a, a sermon necessarily about friendship, but it is about being a friend. Uh, this is not a sermon about leadership, but it is a message about how to lead and the one key thing that God wants all of us to learn to do is love. And Jesus is that example. And that's what I am praying, that God will speak to you today and speak to me. So like Jesus, who is by his life showing us who the Father is, I am praying that God will take you on a journey about how to learn to love. Now, you may be thinking, oh, man, I got this together. I've been married a long, long time. I, I've, everybody thinks I love them, and, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I got this thing down. I don't need this. Oh, come on. Uh, be honest with yourself. There is not one of us on the face of this earth that has it all together in this aspect of loving you know why? Because we have a tendency to be very self-focused, self-centered, self-absorbed. Most of the time, we are concerned about how 
other people are receiving us. We are wondering what other people think of us. Uh, that's not love. Uh, that's um, a self-focused, self-centered life. But if you want to learn to love, all you need to do is to follow the example of Jesus. And I want to give you several things, and I need to tell you, it's going to take us probably a couple of weeks to complete this, but I want you to hang on with me. And today would be a great day to take notes. Would you? Do that. Grab something right now that you can take notes and follow the example of Jesus. Are you ready for the first thing? Let me give you the first principle about learning to love. Number one, be there. Just be there. I mean, show up. God wants you and he wants me to learn how to love by being there. That's exactly what Jesus was there. He was there for his disciples every step of the way. He was there physically. Uh, he was there emotionally. He was there spiritually. You see, from his call to his crucifixion, he was there for them. And even uh, after his resurrection, the first place he wanted to, to be was with them. And that's why he would step out of the shadows, if you will, in the garden and reveal himself to Mary. You, you and I need to grab hold of this. Jesus was ever-present for his disciples. He was there. And I, honestly, that's a, a question for many of us. Are, are we there? Are we there for our, our loved ones? Or do we find ourselves uh, only there when it's convenient for us? Uh, you see, as I look in Scripture, I realize that love means to practice always being there. And that's something that you never uh, get completely right. And that's a challenge. But again, let me just tell you, Jesus was there physically, financially for them, uh, emotionally for them, spiritually for them. I mean, he was there. I, I pray that uh, that would be true of you and that would be true of me, that that we would be known that we were there and that we are there for our husbands, for our wives, for our children, for our parents, for our siblings, for our friends. Being there is important. Uh, there are three phrases that come to mind as I think about being there. Jesus, number one, planned on being there. Number two, he planned on being there for each one of them. And then Jesus planned on being there for each one of them with encouragement. They were right there to experience that. So if you're going to win at this thing called love, you have, you've got to be present to win. That's right. You must be present to win. Do you struggle with that? In your conversations with your wife or your husband or with your kids or with your parents or with your friends, are you um, disconnected? Um, you, you just can't do that long distance. You've got to be there. But sometimes we can be in the very same room, but we, we're acting disconnected. We're not engaged. And nothing is more painful in, in a relationship than to feel like when you're talking and you're talking to that person you love, they are not there. Uh, that's why many wives, when they begin to talk, what they're saying uh, is, I want you to hear me. Would you put down the paper? Would you get off your phone? Uh, would you stop looking at the television set? And would you listen to me? Would you look at me? Uh, I hate to be honest with you sometimes, but uh, that's a real challenge for me because I'm on my phone nonstop. You know, on one hand, being on a phone, uh, being able to get the data that you need, the information that you need is a, a very wonderful thing. On the other hand, it can 
almost be addictive to the place that you disconnect with other people. And there have been times, let me be transparent with you, that I've either been on my phone or on my computer, and my wife engages in a conversation, and she stops talking, and she says, would you just look at me? Would you put the phone down and and look at me? I, I want to know that you are hearing me. Oh, man, that's painful because I, I didn't intend to do it that way, but I did. Whether you're a man or you're a woman or you're a student, get this, and your parents are talking to you and you're more busy uh, on your uh, Xbox, uh, you're, you're uh, focused on your PlayStation, Uh, You're in a game, and you don't even stop long enough to put it on pause, to look them in the eye and listen to them. Literally, that says that you are discounting them. Uh, Sure, they may be interrupting you, but love means that you will be there. Be there. Don't be disconnected. When your friends talk to you, and you're having a conversation uh, with one of them on the street or in the halls of school, and they're telling you they're put, uh, something they feel, and they're pouring their heart out, and you're looking around down the halls uh, looking for someone else to come, looking for one of your other friends, and you're not focused on them? Do you know how that makes someone feel discounted? not cared about, not loved? Do you understand the impact of not paying attention, not really being there does? Some of us, will we feel like, well, we're there physically. And if we're there physically, surely uh, people know that <laughs> we're there for them. But no, that's not how it works. God wants you and he wants me to practice the ministry of being there. In fact, if there was one thing that you could glean from this message today is if you're going to learn to love, you've got to be there. Be engaged when you're there. And that's exactly what Jesus did. So let me ask you a question today. Are you there? I mean, really there for the people, the person that you say you love. Don't be thinking about someone else right now. Don't be thinking about your husband not being there. Are you there? Don't think about your friend not being there. Think about, are you there for your friend? Do you love like Jesus loved? Oh, man. You know, I I am um, so disappointed that I cannot go further with you today. But maybe, just maybe, that's what the Lord wanted you to grab hold of. Just one thing, one thought. If you're going to love like Jesus loves, be there. As Jesus was there for his disciples, he wants us to be there for each other. I mean, that's important. If this week you could just decide with all of your heart, beginning right now, every day, every moment, when the people I love engage with me, I'm going to be there mentally, emotionally, uh, supportively, physically, uh, in every way, shape, and form. You know what that'll do? that will set your relationship, regardless of what that relationship is all about, regardless of what level that relationship is about, it's going to set you on a course to make you the kind of person that God wants you to be. And that's exactly what he is trying to do. And sometimes God puts people in our lives that knock off edges. He knows how to chisel us And maybe you've heard those words from your spouse or your parent or one of your friends that when they talk to you, you're really not there. 
today, choose to be there. Can I pray for you? Let me do it right now. Father, I thank you that in this moment that you are speaking to your children who want to act like your children, who want to live like Jesus lived and love like Jesus loved. I pray that you would take them on this journey and show them how. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, it's hard to give away love unless you have love. And if you are watching today and you have never given your life to Christ, I pray you'd pick up the phone and call us. That 800 number is right on the screen, and there is someone standing by to introduce you to the one who is love, Jesus. And they are there right now standing by to pray for you. Or maybe you need somebody to pray with you about a situation that you're going through right now. We want to be here for you, so pick up the phone and call us. I don't care how unimportant you may think your prayer request is. It's important to us. Do you know I see every week, in fact, I can't wait to go online and look at the names of people who have called in for prayer whether it's prayer for salvation or our prayer for uh, trying, uh, asking God to meet a financial need or prayer for healing or uh, to resolve a relationship issue. That's one of the things that I long to do every week is to see the names of the people so that I can pray for them personally who have asked for prayer. I guess that's my way as a pastor to try to be there. And that's what God wants you to do today. I pray you'd call us, would you? Thanks for watching Higher Aim with Dr. Kurt Dodd. Visit higheraim.org for more free resources. There, you can access our daily devotions, sign up for our monthly teaching letter, even download the Higher Aim app, and so much more. Just go to higheraim.org to get started.